Hello, this is Mark Galliotti, Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of International Relations, Prague. I'm speaking from a very bare flat in what is likely to be my last video from Prague with another brief comment on Russian affairs. Now today, Monday the 21st of May, the UK's Parliament's Foreign Affairs Select Committee has just released a very good report, uh, Bosco Gold, on measures that should be taken to essentially reduce Britain's vulnerability to Russian kleptocratic dirty money and the political corruption that, that can carry with it. Um, I very much actually advise you to go and read it if you're interested because it is both important and I hope will be paid uh, very close attention by the government but also frankly because it's written in rather less uh, opaque prose than many such reports. In the name of a full disclosure, I was one of the experts that the committee was kind enough and to uh, honour with coming to give evidence. However, I think I want to therefore make three basic points about what I think is important on this crucial issue and this crucial report. First of all, here's the problem. Of course, not all Russian money is kleptocratic, is based on stolen assets and so forth, though a depressing amount is. And also, not all money is, in some ways, at the disposal of the Kremlin, able to be used precisely to penetrate and suborn foreign institutions. But the depressing point is that, and this is one of these ways in which, as ever, Putin is opportunistically effective in the short term, but disastrous in the long term for his own country. Um, the logic of Putin's approach, having created this kind of mobilization regime, for his geopolitical struggle against the West, in which essentially any institution, any individual, can be pressed into service as an instrument of state power. Whether we're talking about a business person here, or a journalist there, or indeed a gangster in the middle. Which, what that means is that while not every Russian, of course, indeed only a fraction of them, um, that we find abroad is involved in some kind of hostile active measure by the Kremlin, Almost any of them could become one, could be used as and when the circumstances seem to, seem to require. Because let's be honest, when the Kremlin expects you to do something, it's a very, very brave and or foolhardy individual who says no. So in this case, like it or not, we have to consider every single source of Russian influence and power as potentially, and I'd stress that potentially, a Kremlin instrument. And therefore, the, the sad truth of the matter is, inevitably, all Russians will, to some extent, be treated with a degree of suspicion. And, and this is obviously one of the underlying issues of this report, that any of this Russian money in the UK, as elsewhere, could be mobilised for Russian strategic purposes. Second point I would make, though, is that we have to be very, very clear about the impact this will have on policy. And here, I think, what we need to do is distinguish capability from the intent, the purpose behind it. If we attack Russia's capacity to use the UK, and particularly the City of London, as a congenial place to park your money, make investments, raise new money, buy property, move your money, essentially launder it, um, will that have an impact on the Russian state's capacity to continue this geopolitical conflict with the West? Yes, of course it will. Because although most of that is private money, it is private money that the, the Kremlin can tap from time to time. But in addition, what we've seen is that, in fact, when particularly oligarchs who are close to the Kremlin fall under pressure from sanctions, the Kremlin is essentially on a bound, it feels, to reward them, to basically recompense them for their losses abroad. So actually, what, what this does is creates additional costs to the Russian Federal Treasury. And the less money Putin has at his disposal, the less he can spend on everything from tanks and guns to satisfying his elite, to foreign adventures abroad, to just basically keeping the ordinary Russian population content. So in this respect, it definitely does impact upon, indirectly, Russian capacities. However, in the short term at least, we should not assume that this is going to change Putin's policy. Those people who say that Putin is just all about the money, more money for him, more money for those close to him. I think misses, missed a key point. Putin is basically now an ideological figure more than anything else. In some ways he's become prey to his own mythology and he's now looking to build his historic legacy, his place in history. So I think 
he is not going to instantly say, oh dear, a bunch of oligarchs who stole millions of, of rubles, billions of rubles, um, are now having trouble in the West, therefore I need to change my policy. He will at best say, don't worry, I'll still look after you boys, or at worst say, well, tough, we're in a, a war, and frankly, you're going to have to take a, a bit of a hit. So this is not something that is instantly going to make him change his policy. But of course, anything that affects his capacities will, of course, have an impact on his policy. But as I said, it's, it's, it's further down the line. The one thing he doesn't want to do is essentially embark on measures that will fail. So if we weaken him, we actually reduce his appetite for aggressive and adventurist policies. Third point I'd want to make, though. Should we be going after Russian kleptocrats? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just because some banks, some estate agents are benefiting from it, there's absolutely no reason for the UK to prostitute itself to purveyors of dirty money from Russia. But why should we be stopping at Russia? This is also a moral question as well as a practical and geopolitical question. And not only do we, I think, do ourselves a disservice if we focus exclusively on Russian dirty money rather than also thinking about all the other countries in the world where there are kleptocrats, dodgy businessmen and dirty money being moved into venues like the City of London. But also, it actually weakens our position with Russia. One of the key legitimating elements of Putin's rule is the narrative that he's creating, which is to tell Russians, look, the world hates Russia, the world hates Russians. It is trying to limit us, constrain us, stop us from achieving our proper position as a great power, but also trying to wipe away, homogenize our distinctive civilizational virtues. And because he has massive control above all over the TV media, um, there's an extent to which he has traction on this, and Russians are willing to believe that somehow they are being uniquely singled out. We need, insofar as it is possible, to counter that, to show ordinary Russians that we have a problem with Putin and the Kremlin, not with ordinary Russians. Remember, in many ways we need to think of Russians as being Putin's first victims. If we cannot actually reach out to them and convince them that we are their friends, and I think there are other things we can do, but that's for an, another conversation at another time, at the very least, we cannot give Putin ammunition. And if we focus exclusively on Russian dirty money, this will be presented and this will be seen not actually as a campaign against kleptocracy, but a campaign against Russians. And, and at the same time, it will be used to discredit our belief that these individuals are using and moving and relying upon dirty funds. So let's absolutely have a campaign against Russian kleptocrats. Let's very much see what we can do to starve the Kremlin insofar as we can of, above all, foreign assets that it can use for state purposes. But at the same time, why not make this part of a wider campaign to actually renovate the real values that... We, we say, are central to British culture um, and target not just Russian kleptocrats but other kleptocrats. In the short term, is this going to mean a bit of a hit to the City of London? A bit, yes. But let's be honest, if cost is the only calculator by which we actually assess policy, then essentially we're bought and paid for by the Chinese. So why not actually use this as the opportunity to at least start a much broader campaign against kleptocracy at the same time as using this to not just, as it were, fight an economic war against the Russians, but above all, prevent the Russians from being able to fight an economic political war against us. Mark Galliotti of the Institute of International Relations in Prague, shortly to be in London and then to be in Florence, but at the moment, thank you very much. And let me just remind you, if you're interested in this kind of thing, my book, The Vori, Russia's Super Mafia, is out from Yale University Press already in the UK and as of the 29th of May in the United States. Thank you very much indeed.